Hello everybody and welcome to this playthrough for Master Division with the tournament win for the qualifying round here in the big top tournament in Golf Clash the game video sponsored by Golf Clash and Play Demic. Make sure that you do hit that uh, thumbs up button also subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications also go to patreon.com slash golf clash tommy to get the ultimate tournament guide for pro expert and master this playthrough will have a drop on every hole yes on every single hole it's not often that we do have that but i mean i'm enjoying myself already shooting a minus 19 on my first round so i hope you're gonna enjoy yourself as well on park de paris follow the info box on the right hand side good to get the club distance adjustment elevation adjustment also what ball and club type i suggest you to play with have in mind that those are all suggestions and you don't have to follow it if you don't want to but there is always a plan behind it so let's go to hole number one For hole number one is the only hole that I'm actually going to give you two type of play here. Because I do believe that we do need to have two options. Because the drive here that I'm going to show you as option number one is a bit aggressive. Seven and a half bar topspin. We stretch out to max. And we have the blue ring by the rough line with a poke seven and eight. I'm going with two left spin as well as I forgot to say that. Apocalypse level six. We're going to have one third of the blue ring inside the rough to the right. Have in mind as well that Apocalypse level 6 does not have the same top spin Apocalypse level 7 and 8 has. So what I want us to do is to push up 3 yards after the adjustment with Apocalypse level 6. The intention is to have the ball clip the rough and to roll out to be around 405 to 420 yards. Because that will uh, make us uh, play an end bringer shot. One like a couple of things to have in mind if you miss the rough which you will most likely do if you hit a great left then you will roll into the rough at the top then that rough iron is going to be played need to give you the correct one it's going to be played minimum distance minus 50 55 percent elevation power five ball settings with no spin if you go with dead bounces out from the rough you're going to play with a short iron then you play uh, that based on you know either rings from in or from complete minimum distance with 15 percent elevation power five ball settings but if everything goes as we want to which obviously is the most logical outcome as well especially if you hit a great right or a perfect drive then we're gonna have uh, a wedge and this one is gonna play a little hybrid of eb school so first i'm gonna do the eb school method here i'm gonna check what type of club range i'm at right Obviously, that's tough to do just by eyeballing, but we do our best. Then I'm going to add 2.8 backspin. That's uh, the fixed spin that I'm going to use all the time. Ball guideline, one and a half green square through the hole. So in this video here now, I'm going to adjust 82% slider, 35% elevation, power five ball settings. So this is like a little hybrid because EB school normally play is played without spin. But here I want to do backspin because i want to take the advantage of the downhill slope as i'm not having enough backspin to just bounce directly on the fringe right so perfect ball and this is going to be in all the time um so which is the good part you know wedge is always easier to hit perfect with than a short iron or a long iron but again for those of you that do not have an apocalypse level six or better or not have the will uh, to play a max all power shot uh, or just Again, don't want to play the shot that I just played here. I'm going to show you a nice layup shot that is also money, just that you hit perfect on the second shot. So for option number two, layup option, max top spin, five bars of top spin, and max side spin to the right with the rock level nine. Red ring by the rough line at plus three, just before it turns to plus four. Adjustment then is going to be max no elevation power one ball settings. To make it easier is one to one. So 9.7 rings for 9.7 miles per hour. Outside wall, curl to the right and try to hit perfect. The idea here is to get the ball up to 340 uh, to 345 yards, which I've been at every single time. And I played this shot, I think I played it six times before I went over to try another one. And when I do get four drops in a row, obviously, then I gonna, I'm not going to spend much more time on that particular shot. Uh, second shot we're gonna play with a b52 and now it's gonna be important to give ourselves a reference when we don't have a pin shake and we don't want to use yardage because it's not a linear hole so then we're gonna do a check at the start of the back fringe right plus five and that's where you're gonna be most of the times if you hit perfect we'll say on the drive 
0.8 bars of topspin, one right spin. Ball guideline should now be through the hole. You can see that it looks really strange. It looks like we're gonna, gonna come in super hot. And also the bull side to be just by the edge of the rough. All right, here in this uh, video here, I do pull with a small 12 one. Avoid that, try to pull straight. That's very, very important. When it comes to the adjustment here now, the plus five is then going to equal 45% slider with no elevation, power three ball settings. Perfect ball. And you will see that I hit the rough. You can see that I hit the beginning of the rough when it comes to me using that 12 one. So avoid the 12 one. Pull straight. If you're going to favor anything, favor 11.59. But, you know, again, you decide which way you want to play on hole number one. Uh, both of the options works well. And I would say that, uh, you know, the option number two will always give you, it will give you a nice drive. You can, you never have to be concerned about that. But obviously the second shot is a bit more tech technical as you need to have the pull angle correct. You need to center the ball properly, which it will have to do obviously on the option number one also. But the problem on the second option could be that you can actually miss the rough if you don't do what you're supposed to do, which is never going to be the case if you do play option number one and that shot there. So again, up to you to decide what you want to do here on hole number one. For hole number two, we're going to play with a sniper. So start off with a power one ball side spin three. Blue ring by the rough line to the right at complete max distance. Then we're going to go four and a half bar backspin, sorry, 4.2 bars of backspin, obviously, and three bars of side spin to the right. 8.6 is the highest win we can get here, and we're going to adjust 10.6 rings. So it's a bit unfortunate to get high wind here, which unfortunately will then be two pulls, uh, which it's really crap. So what I do here, 10.6, is that I pull 0 0.6 rings at first, then I pull the rest of the 10 rings. No curl whatsoever here and center the ball. Make sure that you give yourself time to properly center the ball as a little bit of curl to the left or right or under or over power will have an effect of the outcome. If you do everything perfect, I do believe you will have a very good chance for a drop here as I've dropped this one several times already and also has been several drops in um, the team when it comes to hole number two. One thing to have in mind though is that you can get a little headwind angle of T which means that you will pull into overpower if you keep yourself with a side spin as a power one ball. So what I would really recommend in the end, if you feel that you do have the time, when you have set up your target, change to a power two side spin three ball, like an Ascar or Mirage ball or any other ball that you have side spin three power two, because that will prevent you from going into overpower, which otherwise will have will make you use overpower, and that's never ultimate when it comes to a par three. Very good chance on hole two. Hole number three, I love this hole. This is probably one of my favorite, uh, one of my, my, yeah, most favorite part five there is in the game. There's one of the Yamel Dunes as well, but this one, I love this one. NMT, don't touch the target until we adjust the rings. Adjust max plus 10, power five ball settings. Then we're gonna push up nine yards. So if we are at the plus five, we're gonna push up to the top of plus 14. Four and a half bar top spin, two left spin, not more because we don't want to roll into the rough and we actually don't want to roll through the rough, even that's a possibility. Max curl to the left and try to hit perfect. Great left, great fire, great right has still been fine. That has been no issue at all. And we do want to have that roll out there to get ourselves to 460. When we do get to around 460, it's going to be a pin check. Uh, and if we do have a drive that stays around 445, 450, it's going to be a landing position shot instead. And we obviously have both scenarios in the guide. We're not going to see the drive again. Sorry about that. So we're going to take up the, sec take up the <laughs> second shot. Uh, there we do have it. Guardian is the club. Minus 5% elevation. So I do go to the pin check as first. But have in mind that this is a different video. This is not the same opponent that I played with on the drive. So this is based on a shorter drive. So, But I showed you the pin check just to try to display it at least. So plus 10. 
is the landing position spot here. We go max backspin and half bar right, bar right spin. Now look at my second bounce. That's the key to be the second dark green square to the left of the pin to be just by the edge of that in the center. I know it maybe sounds tough, but again, do your best because again, we are looking to catch the funnel that is on the back of this screen and people have reporting loads of drops with great left, great right, with perfect. So there is a lot of room. So I would say the landing position is not crucial, but obviously we should always try to do the correct thing. I've yet to miss this one with a great left and perfect. I have yet to hit great right, but people have said it has dropped with a great right. So again, we'll see. This is an absolute money shot though. So with a setup, a setup a par five with a free to play ball like the luminary you know we can't ask for more to be honest and this one i consider be uh, be easier to drop when i uh, then i see any other uh, any other of the par threes here in this qualifying round All right, for hole number four, the replay is messy. So therefore you will first see me make the drop here on first video where I'm then going to upload another video for you where you will see the complete routine. Because the fact is we're gonna play with a quarterback all the time. So what you're gonna do is to start with any power zero wind five ball. And we start with a blue ring to the right by the rough line in complete minimum distance. Then we're gonna adjust and we're gonna adjust max plus five power two ball settings, which is one to one. Once we have done that, we will then change to a side spin four power zero, power one, power two ball. Doesn't matter what type of power there, but power zero to power two ball side spin four. Then we're gonna apply curls. We're gonna move the ball, the right side of the ball to be just where the circle cracks. You can see there that it went from being all filled to then crack and that's the spot that we're looking for hit perfect and i do believe that this is a money shot and has been dropping every time with a perfect so far obviously you know like we can make mistakes but this is a very good chance for a drop but let's take a look at the routine so you can see that in action so we don't have to just guess it's weird that the replays become like that sometimes uh, so let's take a look at that here. So you can see here now, I start with a power zero win five ball in complete minimum distance. Disregard the win because this is from the other practice mode. Blue ring by the rough line in complete minimum distance. I do adjust and then I do switch ball after that to then set the correct spin. Uh, obviously, if you do have any power zero side spin four ball or something like that, you can obviously go with that. But I feel more comfortable with a ball that I feel that I can center properly. The spin is 0.8 backspin and four bars of side spin to the right. Very good chance on hole four. Hole number five. And we are going to play to the right hand side here because we are going to try to catch this once again a massive funnel from this side. There is a couple of funnels here on Part de Paris. And, you know, luckily I know how to play them. <laughs> One and a half right spin, six and a half bar top spin. We start at the top of plus nine. Once that is done, we will adjust max plus 10 power three ball settings. You can see here that I'm going one and a half ring into overpower, which I will then result into going two rings of overpower instead. So for Apocalypse 6, 7 and 8, I'm going to use half a ring extra overpower than what I adjust into. Great left and great right has been fine. The only thing that could happen with, you know, a great right especially is that you do get dead bounces, which is going to put you around 355 yards. I will give you a measurement for that once we are done here. 365 to 375 is absolutely perfect. That's kind of where we want to be. So now after that, we're going to now look for the back start of the fringe at the back. Plus one is what we do have on that one. And that's going uh, to be something that, what, that we want to remember. Now we're going to look to have the top of the white ring by the rough line. And we're going to look for the funnel. You can see here that I'm somewhat trying to have the ball guideline straight into the funnel. So it's important that you give yourself time 
to adjust here because the trick to make this one 100% consistent is to have the ball guideline straight to the pin with one green with the ball guideline one green square through the hole but being into the funnel so if you're just setting a fixed spin here you're going to off you're going to come into a problem so you need to be prepared for doing this type of measurement here now 10% elevation plus 1 is 24% slider in this video here I do adjust 20% slider and that's why I'm giving us instead 24 to give ourselves a little bit more room on the adjustment so we're not gonna just snuck it in on the right side of the cup playing with a centurion there's no need for more obviously those that do want to spend a special ball you can play a nitro ball would prevent you from having to go with overpower I think or at least to go with much overpower but again you know you decide what you want to do but to have said in the end about the balls is that the reason I do not play with a power four or a power five ball is because there is always a risk to have this massive glitch roll on the fairway that's kind of common for everyone that has played this hole before so that's what I'm trying to prevent here is that if we're having a power four ball or a power five ball it might be a nice very close to min shot if we do the drive correct but if we do have a bad drive and a lucky drive and we have that massive glitch rollout then we're gonna be in between clubs and I'm not gonna gamble with that so that's why I'm taking a little bit tougher drive as I do go with overpower with a uh, power three ball uh, over using a little bit simpler drive but with the risk of going in between clubs with a power four or power five all right time to go for green T time to yell yolo but with a uh, swinglish pronunciation so what we're gonna do here in this one is that we're gonna use a fixed position to be uh, the base which is gonna be 17 miles per hour Based on that position, we're either going to then adjust more to the left or more to the right, depending on the wind strength. So take a look, 16 miles per hour, it's actually a good example. We have the left side of the yellow rain to be just where the sand starts to become wet. And now I'm shaking wind angle here, it looks to me that it is a little tailwind, again, hard to say. Then I turn the wind arrow to south, because now I'm gonna move, uh, pull myself to the right. So I'm gonna have to pull, uh, have them wind angle pointing south and I'm gonna pull towards myself right if I would be having a wind that is stronger than 17 I would be pulling myself the normal way as we do let's say that we have an 18 miles per hour then I would having the wind arrow pointing north and I would pull myself one ring and if I do that I will not push up very important so what we're looking for here then is to go with uh, curl and uh, we're gonna see here to give you just a firm uh, explanation of curl we're gonna go with approximately 1.8 ball of curl to the right and we're gonna go with full blast overpower and max slice and we go with 6.8 top spin with as much side spin that we can which is gonna be approximately 3.6 side spin or something like that the idea here is obviously to get the ball to green but many of the times we will get stuck in the bunker by the green as well so from the bunker i will show you a shot here as well we're gonna try to catch this absolute massive funnel which will give you a great left and a great right proof uh, or it will be great left and great right proofed if you put the spins properly and set it up properly that's very important obviously so you can see here that I'm somewhat looking to get uh, the correct spin here and I'm not really finding it as I want to. So I move up onto the fringe here to try to find a better line. And you can you will notice here when I find it, how you know I can move left, I can move right, I can move basically back and forth, and you know it's nothing's gonna happen. You can see there. So which means I have room. From this spot, which is pretty far up into the bunker, you're gonna adjust min minus 10% cut in half so and power five numbers let's say that you on your app it says three and a half rings for min minus 10 power five right then you're gonna adjust 1.75 rings but you're gonna adjust 1.7 rings is what you're gonna do here i do min minus 20 percent p5 cut in half and that's why i'm i'm coming in right side of cup i need it a little bit more so this is an extra thing to have in mind because again the bunker is going to definitely be in play and we do want to set it up in the best way possible so we do have a great a great uh, almost a great proof shot all 
On hole number seven, we are going to send this. So at no movement, don't touch the target until it's time to adjust the rings. Right, this is tailwind angle, which is when you do have, you know, a center line pointing to the right side of the light pole. So we do adjust max plus 20 power fireball settings. And once we have done that, we shall push up. And then obviously a push up will vary depending on what wind angle you're having and also what wind strength you're having. This to obviously to maximize our chance to get the eagle every single time. So I go up to just at the top of plus 26. Then I will set spin. I go one right spin and 3.8 bars of backspin. Then I will be applying full curl to the right and this obviously will be with a bit slower needle and when it comes to uh, playing with a higher wind and 16.4 obviously we will have an even slower needle like that. This shot is tested with a berserker when it comes to wind 15.5 and up. We ca I can't really say if it's going to work with lower wind than that because it is untested but based on where we do land with a 16.4 miles per hour wind I wouldn't be surprised if a 14 mile per hour would make it over, but maybe with less backspin. But again, it's untested. It's up to you, obviously, to decide if you want to test that. Those of you that do play with Apocalypse level 5, 6 or 7, go with 1.2 bars of right spin instead. The reason for that is that you have slightly less curl than what an Apocalypse level 8 have. So you won't be pushing yourself as equally amount as equally much to the right as we do with apocalypse level eight so have that little detail in mind as well hole number seven is a nice one if you get into wedge range you play eb school plus 15 uh, power five ball and numbers like if you do get to a wedge that you might clip the rough on the second bounce or something like that that, that you have like a 25 percent wedge or something again you know up to you to decide wh whatever way you want to play the wedge but just as an extra little thing Hole number eight, we're going to do the same as we do on hole number four, which is start at complete minimum distance. But this time we do a power two ball and we start with the red ring by the rough line. 4.5 bars backspin and two left spin, right? Once that is done, we shall adjust one to one. And here it is important that you pay attention to the wind angle. Obviously, this is more displayed in the guide as it's hard to cover all the angles here on the specific shot. We pull eight rings. Once that is done, we shall then have decided, should we add curl or should we not? In this case, we're going to go baby curl to the right, which is the right side of the ball, just barely touching the teeth to the right. When it comes to ball swap here, what you can do is once you have uh, set up your position, you can change to whatever power zero, power one, power two ball you want to use. If you do want to use a power four ball or power five ball for whatever reason then you can do that by switching to that after you have made your adjustment but not before so that way you can again come around by not using exactly the same ball that i'm using here in the video When it comes to hole number 9, we are going to set up with Apocalypse 7 and 8, half of the 4th ring into the rough. Apocalypse level 5 and 6, we're going to go blue ring to the left by the rough line. Max top spin, 1 left spin. And then we're going to adjust max plus 20. I would strongly advise you to make sure that you do not have any 11.59 on this shot. I would rather see you play with a small 12 or 1 than anything. The reason for that is that going with 11.59 here will pull you closer to the rough line to the left and we don't need to get close more close than we are because we need to have room for a minor great left. Once we have adjusted max plus 20 we're gonna push up in this case I go to the top of plus 25 for a 12.2 miles per hour. Full curl to the left Try to hit perfect. Again, a great right is better than a great left, but a minor great left has still been fine. I don't know about the double great left though, so please have that in mind. In this instance, the ball rolls very long and we roll into an area that is 400, uh, sorry, 550 yards. And something to have in mind when it comes to that is that depending on how far up on the fairway we roll, the, we need to do different on the second shot. 
And what I would like to say to you here, though, is that if you have a low wind with a luminary, which is a wind three ball, low wind I consider to be below uh, below 11, 11 miles per hour, then I would switch to a rose ball, which is a wind two ball instead to increase the wind a little bit. I would rather ha uh, want to have between like 11 and 13 and a half miles per hour if I can choose. Now for the second shot, we're gonna play with the Falcon or whatever short term you feel comfortable with. And I'm gonna do uh, first a fringe check here. So we're gonna look at the plus one to be a marker, to be by you know the, the fringe that is by the dark green square line uh, towards the pin. Two left spin. And I had that one at plus one yard mark. And the plus one yard mark when it comes to a Falcon level eight here is gonna be 66% slider and it's gonna be 10% elevation. So we do adjust for that, center the ball, and then we're gonna try to hit perfect. What I would like to say though, is that if we roll shorter than this, let's say that we would roll around 525 to 530 yards approximately, we will have to, in that case, reduce side spin. And the reason for that is that we need to then make sure that we're coming in towards the hole with the same angle as we're having here. So therefore we need to reduce and we want to play that one with only one left spin. Again, this is no, this is the toughest of the holes that we do have. And the reason for that is not the drive. The reason for that is the second shot as it's impossible to design a super solid second shot as we don't really know where we're gonna end up on the fairway. So we could be all from 510 yards up to 550 yards and there is no one in the world that can give you a spot on adjustment from everywhere. So be prepared to maybe do your own stuff as well if you have a drive that's not similar to what I have here. But again though, it's a possible chance for a drop. So I, I'm, I'm not complaining, I'm just stating uh, a fact. Thank you so much everybody for watching this playthrough for Master Division here for the qualifying round in the big top tournament in Gold Clash the game. Get the best guides on the market for Master Division or for Pro and Expert by going to Patreon. Link is in the description down below. Video sponsored by Gold Clash and Playdemic. Thank you so much for watching and good luck in your Gold Clash game.